first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Please be back once again with Dr. Eileen Bay. This is First World Order Radio. And no doubt we got special guests tonight. Matter of fact, we got two guests. My man, Olabala. Are you here? As well as also Grand Sheik, Brother L. Peace, peace God. Peace, 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 God. Yeah, we here. All right, all right. That's good, that's good. Finally got on through here. Yeah, you know, you know how it go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we know how it go. But, you, you know, know the rope of dope style, rope of dope style. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. No doubt. So we're going to get into a little bit of information tonight in which we're going to be dealing with the Washington with dealing with history as well as also with law. All right. I know that we've gone over some of this information before. However, we got to make it quite clear that historically, Washington or the Tunica tribe as well as also what is known as the Choctaw. All right, the word Choctaw actually was not used. It was a combination of various, of two particular words, as in the word chalk, as in chocolate, and then the word toy, as in Washita. So for the darker Washita, they became known as the Choctaw. All right? Now, when you're talking about right now in history, all right, you're looking at modern day history. If you go back and bring it on up to now, the word Washita is taken from the Egyptian or ancient Kemetic Tamaran or Tamarian, however you want to pronounce it, word known as Ueshita. Ueshita. All right, so the word Washita is from the word Ushita. Or Ushita. Okay, so. When you look up in Wallace E. Budge's book, Egyptian Hieroglyphics, he shows that the word Ueshita means serpent goddess and is normally described as matriarchal 
and she sits on the throne because actually our set, which is Isis, means throne. All right? She means throne. And this serpent sits on the throne, this feminine mother principle sits on the throne. The throne, of course, you know, and she's also the goddess of the northern, which symbolizes the top portion of the head, as well as the bowling over to the pineal gland or in between or right above the third eye or what is known in between the two physical eyes above the eyebrows. In that particular area, it's, that is where she sits. That is symbolic to the throne. And anyone who raises or brings the mother principle to the throne or back to her throne symbolizes where shit though, which actually within Tantra Kriya Yoga or Egyptian Yoga, um, you can get this from actually Muata Ashby's book, Egyptian Yoga, uh, as well as also Volume 1, Volume 2, as well as also um, Egyptian Tantra or uh, Egyptian um, Tantra Yoga, or was that he breaks that information down too, or is that he deals with the U.S. Shipta being the epitome of enlightenment within these particular systems of yoga or yoga. All right, so that shows you that the word yoga or yoga means unity or to unify, which is actually the same as the word religion, in which that deals with particularly to bind or to link back. What are you binding mm-hmm. or linking back to? It is supposed to be your higher self, all right? Um, so, therefore, this symbolizes the awakening of your higher self. Within ancient comedic teachings, that is known as kares, all right, or which is where we get the word Krishna, where we also get the word Critics or Christ from, all right, which means anointed or black one. The word Krishna within Sanskrit means the black one. The word mm-hmm. Christ within that means the um, anointed one. The word Kras means the mummified body of Osiris, which is talking about the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. And upon awakening, the name Kras becomes Heru Kras right. or Heru Mi. Or Heru Messa, all right? Heru Messa becomes Jesus the Messiah within your New Testament. But that symbolizes the awakened soul. The soul has awoken, all right? You have awoken to your higher self, your divine self. So now you're able to become dead to this world and alive in the spiritual world. And I'm meaning that figuratively because, of course, you're not dead. However, your vision, being that now you're able to come out of your body, out what is called out-of-body experience, soul travel, astral travel, etc., do now have that capability of doing so at will or mastering that particular level and you are able to dwell within the particular spiritual realms without having to die with your cord, which is your ethereal or your silver cord still attached. So your spirit, spiritual soul, is able to now travel outside of the physical body. And so now you understand that there is no death, and this is actually part of the highest level in which that you reach as being part of the high priest. Within ancient Kemet, it was called Moors, M A U R S. You don't hmm. believe me? Go look into um, Egyptian hieroglyphics again by E. A. Wallace Budge, in which that he showed you in there that the word, as a matter of fact, is also found on a still in the British Museum, and we stopped going to approximately six years ago, my wife and I. All right, so um, on this still, it basically states that the word Moors, or high priest of the order of Anu, which is on, or which is Ra, as in Amen Ra, or Ur Ra, which becomes the name Allah, later on within Arabic. So we have not never gotten away from worshiping the true living God, 
within all three of the monotheistic belief systems, you say amen, as in amen ra at the end of your prayers, because it symbolizes so be it, or to bring that which is invisible into existence, or manifest, or make God's will be manifest. However you want to um, translate it, or mote it be, or whatever the case may be, um, that is how it's been translated into the English transliteration. But we know, looking on the information coming from E.A. Wallace Bledsoe's book, Egyptian Hieroglyphics, the word Amen is nothing more than Amen Ra, which means the hidden force. The hidden force is your soul embedded inside of the pineal gland, in which that Dakarius, who was a French philosopher, referred to it as the seat of the soul. The pineal gland is the seat of the soul. The pineal gland produces penalty as well as also DMT, which are what is known as higher modifications or refinements of melanin. Mm-hmm. Right? In other yeah. words, this chemical is supposedly only produced after birth to the age of seven, then by puberty it decreases and your pineal gland become atrophied and in some cases calcified. Um, and then is not produced again until the time or the point of death in which that the rest of the penalin and DMT is released from the body um, at that time period. Now, this is what scientists say. However, we're talking about individuals who are in position in which that has calcified pineal glands. So we can't go by their interpretation. We have to understand that we, you know what I'm saying, have the ability in order to dream of color. I was taught in high school and junior high that there are people on this planet who still dream in black and white. Now, how in the hell is that possible when your eyes see color? How right. is that possible? To, you know, and then they also stated that it was impossible to dream in color. And so I'm sitting there saying, well, damn, I must be one of them impossible niggas then. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't dream so in I'm color not. every night. And not just in color, but lucid. I'm able to smell, touch, taste, hear, and speak, you know what I'm saying, and touch within my dreams. And I was able to control my dreams. I was able mm-hmm. to go wherever I wanted to in my dreams. All right? I was a lucid and still is a lucid dreamer. So for people to, you know, to say things like that, and I'm sitting in class, and me and other students are looking at each other like, oh, we're not supposed to be dreaming of color? <laughs> what the hell? Well, too bad. Oh, well. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. there's a difference between those who have uncalcified pineal glands and those who have calcified pineal glands. All right? That means that there's a soul possibly embedded inside of the pineal gland. However, after the age of seven, it became hardened with calcification, and therefore they lack the access to this particular soul principle. So, therefore, they do not have a soul in order to utilize, in order to go into the realms in which that we are able to go into. So, therefore, their dreams lack clarity, and therefore, or this earthly plane, they lack justice. They lack the ability in order to stay within the confines of the laws of my yacht. They lack the ability in order to stay righteous, to stay truthful. But yet, these are the individuals in which they seem to have the tendency in order to find themselves at the top positions within society. This is the amazing thing about this, is that they strive towards gaining something in which that they lack, which is humanity. And they have no emotions about it. They actually are called the sociopaths or what is also referred to as the psychopaths of society, which makes up more than 4%. If you read... African origin of biological psychiatry by Dr. Richard King, he states that 5 to 15% of Africans have calcified pineal glands. 20 to 35% Asians have calcified pineal glands, but 60 to 
80% Europeans have Caspar pineal glands. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it is determined that the less melanin you have, the more calcification you have within your body, hence, i.e., your brain. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, those who have Caspar pineal glands are not human. They are mankind, a kind of man that is not quite human because they don't have the hue, which is the melanin, in which that establishes justice. You can read that within Carol Barnes' book about melanin. Okay? Now, this is something in which that has failed, we have failed to recognize within aspects of law. When we go and have to deal with these individuals in the court system, all right. Mm-hmm. Not only yeah. have some of them have taken, right. Not only have some of them have taken oaths to not allow the rise of the Moors, because this is what they take within the Masonic Shriner orders. These so-called white Shriners, these white Masons, have taken oaths not to allow the Moors to ever rise again. So, some of them abide by that, and some of them know that it's basically it's fruitless. They can't do anything about it. The no, rise of the Moors, the rest of the Moors has already begun and is in full effect and is happening. But yet, they have yeah. they try to attempt to do certain things in order to stop the progress. So, they come up with propaganda. It was that most of you have now seen on the news media. It was that mm. nonsense. Yeah. But they deal with it. They deal with it, you know, with this particular information, such as the right to travel, but yet the United States Supreme Court case laws or state otherwise. But yet if you challenge the United States Supreme Court and you send forth your information, they'll knock it back down because they don't want to give the issue to the lower court as if they are agreeing with the lesser courts. But yet the lesser courts are not Article Three courts, which is based on the Constitution. And obviously the United States Supreme Court has gone outside of bounds and is therefore de facto themselves. Yeah. In which they yeah. have found out that the United States Supreme Court or the United States of American Supreme Court is actually in Philadelphia, which was the seat of the Moors. Yeah. All right. Now, you can get this information from going back and studying um, the Articles of Association, 1774. The Congressional Congress was taking place within Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in which that was named after William Penn, who had an agreement of a treaty with the Lenape, or Lenny Lenape, who are the Nubians, the Kushites. The Moors. Now you can go and read history of Lewis and Clark's adventures and read about Ben York and Satchel Weah, in which who was husband and wife, in which they had actually led the expedition of William and Clark across from the east to the west. And here's Ben York, who is allegedly a so called former slave, as they would tell us with the history book, but of course there is no slavery um, connection with him, he is a Moor. And he knows many, many, many Native American languages and Mm -hmm. dialects. And this is the reason why they chose him, because he was able to speak Iroquois, you know, um, know, which was one of the largest confederations, as well as also Algonquin. Yeah in which that as they was passing through these particular territories, he was able to give them access without being harmed. All right? So, and I'm saying that in order to say this, is that Ben York, you know what I'm saying, um, as you know, was related to Diane Fletcher, in which that, some of y'all have seen the pictures of this sister, you know, so-called black, mm-hmm. but yet she's right. a woman, and she has on native dress, you know, 
And there's many in which that have come and stayed in which that they are related to her and to Ben York. One in particular is Dr. York, you know, in which that he petitioned the Empress back in the 90s to be looked at and seen as being part of that family bloodline. Okay? My teacher, Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, who was crown prince of the Empire Washington D. Duck Demonia, who formed the United Washington D. Duck Demonia at the request and at the behest, I would say, of the Empress and her son, Joan Frederick Washington, Washington, in 2004. Matter of fact, it was May 15th through 17th of 2004 when he went to California to meet with the Empress and to meet with Joe. And it was there in which that he stated that we became part of that bloodline. But as Prince Stane explained to us, as he brought us in as being chiefs, even though there was no chief position within the Washington deduct the money or the Empire Washington deduct the money, it was in his group in which that became known as United Washington deduct the money or more nation, in which that was the first nation state of the Empire Washington. Understand, you have family, in which that makes up clans, clans that makes up tribes, tribes makes up nations, nations make up empires. So you need nations in order to make up an empire. Also, at that particular time period, Joe also accepted Dr. York's bloodline by way of the Yamasee, who was there at that particular time, who also was there uh, petitioning the Roy, who was Joe Frederick Washington, as well as also his mother, the Empress. And I'm breaking this history down because when we get to law, the question will have to be who are the indigenous people? Because they are the ones who have the rights in order to make the laws upon the land. Right. That's right. An outside an outsider can't come in and make laws no. in your land. We cannot. Now, right. So the question is, what is your proper name, your attributes? What is your nationality and national name? What nation is connected to your nationality? Describe your country's flag and national seal. On what continent is your nation geographically located? And are you indigenous to this land where you now reside? Are you an immigrant? Those are the only questions that we need to ask when it comes to who are the indigenous people here and who are not. Do you have a constitution? Right. Mm -hmm. They can attempt to try to to classify us, you know, Washington, you know what I'm saying, or indigenous people, the aborigines, as being... Mm -hmm. Sovereign citizens, but number one, we're not citizens. No. Of the so-called United States. Corporation. That is verified by the fact of Article One, Section Two, which says that we're three fifths human beings. That is verified by the fact that the Fourteenth Amendment was never fully ratified. That is verified by the fact that when you study law, you will see what is known as the Dred Scott case decision, or Dred Scott versus Sanford, in which that Judge Taney specifically states that there's nothing in which that a Negro has that a white man is bound to respect, and that the Negro and those of African descent are not citizens of the United States, nor will they ever be. And that is fine, because the United States is nothing more than a 40-mile radius of Washington, what is called Washington, D.C., or the District of Columbia. Right, which is a federalized zone. Right, and which is a federalized zone. 
man. We are Americans. That's right. You can look up the definition within Webster's Dictionary, stemming from the 1800s, even up to the 1900s, in particular 1936 and 1937, in which specifically it states that Americans are defined as the aboriginal, natives, copper-colored natives. All right? That's what they define us as. Now, I can take a penny and hold up to all and each and every one of the various shoes of, of, of a penny, of a copper penny. And nearly all of us will fit within the category of being part of the copper skin natives. Yes, sir. Of the copper colored natives who are the aboriginal people, no the doubt. aborigine. The word aboriginal, aborigine. Look up the words, look up synonyms for it, and you will find the word natural person and indigenous. So who are the natural people of the of the Americas? We are. We did not come here four hundred years ago. I'm sorry. The masses of us were already here. Matter of fact, the Empress tells us that nearly eighty five percent of us was already here and that only fifteen percent of us was bought. From the continent of Africa And that's that was right. used To mix in with us So that we will lose our identity And so that they can do their land grab It's still our land Through eminent domain Which means that the government Has orchestrated The theft of land mm-hmm. That's right Okay and So the first question that I asked Right, so the previous questions that I asked is properly answered and without the intent to deceive, it will accurately identify and geographically categorize a person or people and direct them towards their own vine and fig tree. In other words, all the confusion about who is who relating to true immigrant status will be resolved. Right, mm-hmm. you know, like a legitimate nationality card of, of identity can then be issued, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, by the true and rightful government, which are the people, the indigenous people. We the people is where you get the word Lenape or Lenny Lenape, who are a group of Washingtonians who was known as the Delaware Moors, who live throughout Maryland. Mm. All right? And parts of Virginia. All right? But this distinguishes the nationals from the aliens. Exactly. Right? We are American nationals. There's a difference. We are American nationals. The name, the nationality, the nation, country, and the continent upon which they particularly, you know, that particular person, nation is located, shall not conflict with the nation's name, and the truth of his geographics or earth location. Now, check this out. What we're talking about is this, is that proper person, which is proper persona to the jurors, you're standing your proper person, the names and restored geographic education, which is the reverse of the reconstructive history in which they gave us, saying that we all just come from Africa 400 years ago, and that we was all on ships and they brought us all over here, which is a lie. And the Masons know this, the Shriners know this. I'm talking about particularly the yeah. white ones. Mm-hmm. And how okay. I know this is because they basically told my wife and I and, and two other brothers at the United Grand Lodge of England in London. The curator of the museum portion followed us around in order to ask us about Obama being the first president. And my wife turned around and said it was not before him. And he jumped back like Mike Tyson hit him, and he said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? Who are the they? It had to be his Masonic white brothers, his Shrine of white brothers, and Albion's here uh-huh. in the Americas that exactly. he was talking about. Did they spill the beans? Did they spill the beans <laughs> to you niggas and told y'all that y'all are the Moors? Did they spill the beans in order to tell y'all that y'all had government already set up here prior to us taking over and defeating y'all from the inside because it was a part 
um, a plot True. anyway to do so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did they break the oath? Right. right. Did they broke the oath? Did they broke treaties? <laughs> In order to 371 treaties they broke with our people? Yeah. Mm. Most definitely did. Right. So, the indigenous are home and belongs to the land and on the land, and the land belongs to them. Immigrant is a visitor or an invader, according to the motive of their presence, is not at home and does not belong to the land or on the land. The land does not belong to them. That simple. A natural person who is Russian is not American because Russia is not on either of the continents called America, whether it's North, Central, South, or the adjoining islands. A natural person who is Brazilian is American and cannot be a European because Brazil is not part of Europe. (laughs) A natural person who is Alaskan is an American, North American, but it's not Haitian, which is South American or part of the adjoining islands. But yet, they are still both what? American. A natural mm-hmm. person who is French cannot be Mexican nope. and therefore can, cannot be American. French is of Europe and Mexico is of America. A Frenchman is an alien in America and a Mexican is an alien in France. All right? Uh. This national and international truth in principle, it applies universally. So a natural person who is Cuban is an American and cannot be an Englishman who is European. <laughs> the Cuban is American, and the other Englishman is European. The two exactly. different continents, two different people. The no Cuban is indigenous no. to America, and the Englishman is not. Now, isn't that true? National identity of a natural person, discern- discernible, and not complex at all, is it? It's <laughs> easy to find out who right. right. It's easy to find out who is legitimate in law and who is perpetrating a fraud. Perpetrating a color. No, it's, it's not confusing at all. Right. And thus nationality and status co journey with legitimate claims to authority and jurisdiction. Do they have the jurisdiction in order to define you? The answer is no. We have the jurisdiction in order to bring you into their colorful law of court, their kangaroo courts. No. You consent, but even in your consenting, you better make sure that you send a restructive legal notice, which is known as a notice of special appearance or a notice of restricted appearance, as it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. Before right. you get there. So, yes. Right. Before you get there, you mail it in certified mail, and you ask them, and you make sure that you have the number of the case next to your name on the envelope and on your document inside of your notice to make sure that they put it within your file. So when you get to the court, you can stand there and say, um, Your Honor, um, the court doesn't have jurisdiction. I set forth a notice of special appearance or restricted appearance. Therefore, the court must. Um, basically must prove jurisdiction, whether it's over persona, which is over the person, or whether it's over the subject matter. If the court can't do either, then guess what? The case is supposed to be dismissed. Yeah. Right. According to the United States Supreme Court case law. Yeah. That's status. Exactly. That's, right. How, that's the first, right. That's the that's first thing to deal with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, if that does not happen, then you know who you're dealing with. You're dealing with hmm. those in which that are Masonic Shriner, these Albions, in which they have taken their oath to prevent the rise of what? The more. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. actually are the black Messiah? Who are the Messiah? So when J. Edgar Hoover, who was a Masonic Shriner, who pretended to be white when his damn ancestry was of the Hoovers from out of Mississippi, 
he was a nigga, a gay yes, nigga at that. You know what I'm saying? Big time. And he hated blackness so much that he practiced homosexuality to prevent him bringing forth seed from which that would be identified as being niggas. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that's Uncle Ruckus right there. Mm. That is the hatred at best. That is and best. This is yes, sir. That from the 1920s, who exil, who exiled Marcus Garvey, put Marcus Garvey in jail and exiled him to London, or he ended up being exiled from out of the United States, who possibly had a hand in the death of Prophet Nobu Dwali, who the so-called stooges, in which that participated in his death, his murder, who destroyed the Black Panther Party, who possibly had, and we know was um, investigating and bugging Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. This is the individual who wrote the document April the 4th, 1967, one year to be exact before the assassination of Martin Luther King, in which that stated that he wanted to prevent the rise of a messiah who can electrify and unify the masses of those who are the revolutionaries. This yeah. is what was said. So when they talk about mm-hmm. to prevent the rise of the Moors, that is what they're actually talking about. The mm-hmm. Moors are the Messiah. They were the high they are the high priests of the order of Ra. They are the high priests of Allah. Of all law. Mm-hmm. Which is all law, which is the activation of your soul principle, the awaken or woken soul. That's, That's all right. Allah is, is your higher self. How we know, because in the 101s, 102s, as well as also in the Morris Holy Quran, Sokka 7, it talks about Allah in man. Well, where is the law at in man? In your heart. In the heart. Exactly. Exactly. But it's not the physical heart. It's the heart or the core of the brain, which is the pineal, the center of what is known also as being the major endocrine gland or the master endocrine gland of the physical body. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is the heart of the brain which is the center of the brain, the pineal gland. So this is what is really going on. And they want to prevent the rise of the Messiah, the anointed one. In other words, the ones in which that is able to excrete the chemicals, penaline and DMT, which give us access and communication to the ancestors on all planes of existence, whether it's the physical, ethereal, astral, which is the emotional, the mental, the cordial, the spiritual, or the soul plane. Once you are awakened, you have access to all of these realms. And you can call forth a fleet of UFOs. You can call forth a you can call forth ten thousand angels. And you think I'm bullshitting, go and study Simeo Toko. Simeo Toko. Go and read on Fatima, Mm -hmm. the true Fatima history, and the African avatars. Simeo Toko was said to have projected 1,000 small black brown angels in which that witnesses said that they seen one flip over a five-ton truck with one hand in which mm-hmm. they defeated the Belgian mm. army. Mm. Wow. They defeated the colonialized Belgian army in Angola. Y'all better stop thinking that this shit is a joke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll be on them. They do. You are the guys, and this is why they are doing everything they can to block your way, 
genetically modified organisms in the food to stop your genetic connections. Fluoride in the water to stop the activation of your pineal gland, in which that increases calcification of the pineal gland. Mm-hmm. Chemtrails, in which that has aluminum and barium, in which that these agents get inside your body, it goes into the brain area and causes what is known as dementia, causes Alzheimer's, causes Parkinson's disease. In other words, the shakes and shit like Muhammad Ali. It causes multiple cirrhosis, problems with the nervous system. Similar to what um, Lodo Falana and you know and uh, Richard Pryor had. Yeah, yeah, took them out. Right. In other words, it it, it functions off decreasing the vitamin B absorption intake, the vi- vitamin B complex intake. Vitamin B is known to enrich the function of the brain and the nervous system and energy to the cells. This is the shit that they're doing purposely. Yeah, yeah. In order to try By to divine. stop this from taking place. As we speak. That's all right. We have to reach those particular levels. We have to meditate. We have to breathe. We have to do these particular things on a daily basis. We have to break through this threshold. We have to break through just using 10% of our brain. Otherwise, we will always feel helpless and hopeless. And we will always feel under the foot of the oppressor. Yeah. We will always have mental side. In other words, be seen and perceived as undesirable. Living in fear. Right. Yeah. Always living in fear. Yeah. Paranoid. Yeah. They're coming to get me. Yeah. They're right. listening to us. Oh, yeah. There's no fear. It's the ultimate weapon against Somebody's us. following me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The word aboriginal is derived from the old Moorish Latin word aboriginal, which means the first and earliest known natural peoples, and pertaining to their culture, relating to their possessions, their customs, their traditions, and their lands. Aboriginal is an adjective which qualifies, marked, and differentiates characteristics which confine a connection to and notes possession of the first natural person or people. Aboriginal is distinct from and confounded with immigrant and distinguished from European colonialists. So, if you're not Aboriginal, if you're not natural, that means you're not indigenous, and therefore you are an immigrant. Yes, sir. Big time. It's funny, it's funny when Europeans. They're talking about the Mexicans coming here and they're how they're immigrants. But the Mexicans <laughs> are descended from the Omex and the Spaniards, which actually was the Moors. Mm-hmm. All right? Or the remnants of the Moors, for those who did not leave the land stronghold of Granada, Spain, as well as also Cordova and different other places in Spain, in which that was still there. Um, after the time of so-called Columbus or Cologne, Cristobal Cologne. All right, so indigenous is from the old Latin word indigenous, which means born or produced naturally in a land or region and by natural law and heritage. Rightful association with and bound to the soil. Thus, the ancient jurisprudence termed natural person. Hmm. Now, let's look at the word immigrant. Let's look at the word immigrant. The word immigrant is derived from the old Moorish Latin word immigrantum, which means one who is not a native. That means not indigenous. That means not a natural person. That means not. Aboriginal. 
that which immigrates, and more specifically, reference to a person or people who migrated from another place, country, Mm -hmm. or land to another land, place, or country as a settler. Now, when you look up, when you look up, American in 1937, Webster's Universal Dictionary, it specifically says that the aborigines or the aboriginal color copper natives who was here prior to the settlement of their territory by the European. That's basically the definition. That is also right. the United Nations or the UN definition. When you look up the word indigenous, it describes indigenous. And it says, those people who have a historical continuity with this land prior to the invasion of their territories by the European settlers. That's it. That's so, it. Right. So All the right. only immigrant, the only immigrant, Oh, That's right. And also tied to the word Maru, M E R U, which lets you know that it didn't come from the America's uh, Vespucius uh, uh, lie that they said, you know. It tied mm-hmm. to the word Maru. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Which is the word more. That's right, in the, the 1937. And that is in the 1937 edition also. Exactly. It says the original application of the name of America is the word Maru. Now you look up yeah. the word Maru, which is an ancient Egyptian name, ancient Kemetic, ancient Tem- Tamarian, or Tamarian name. The word Maru means guardian. Hmm. And the picture is an owl in the mouth of Ra, which is the word Ru. So an L is an M. That's the letter. Or M is an owl. The mouth of Ra is spelled Ru. R U. So M R U, which is the word more, which is the word mare, which Mm -hmm. is the word more. They're all connected because remember, there was no actual vowels in the ancient Kemetic language. That's all right. Uh, letters R and the letter L were interchangeable. All right? Once again, the letters R and the letter L were interchangeable. The letters M and the letter N were interchangeable. Okay? So, mm-hmm. um, this Mickey Waves notice for the word more. M E R U M O O R M A U R M U U R. But there was no vowels. So, the individuals who were out there tripping, trying to cause division between utilizing the word more, M O O R, or M U U R. You're doing a real disservice to yourself. Yeah. I would be quiet and continue doing research and come to yeah. realization of what we just finished talking about. But you're really looking like a jackass trying to promote this stuff before the people and anyone with common sense who can go and read Wallace or uh, A. Wallace Budge's book, Egyptian Hieroglyphics, or go and travel to the British Museum, and actually see the still with the word more, in which that means the high priest of Anu, which is on, which is Ra, which is symbolic to the sun up in the sky. The sun of righteousness comes with healing in its wings, which is the top portion of the caduceus, which is known as the Uraeus. And when the energies, which are those two serpents, which is the Eda and the Pingala, which are the sacral nerves, come up the spinal column, which is the middle pole, the middle pillar, which is known um, within Freemasonry as Jocene and Boaz, the two pillars, and then there's a third pillar, which is you, yourself, which is your spinal column, your highway to heaven, your stepping stone, your J 
Jacob's Ladder, that is all re- reference to the spinal column. Yeah. yeah. And as the energy comes up, it crisscross each other six times to the seventh, which is on top, which is the activation of the pineal gland, which is the ball on which that the wings expand from. Hence, you at Shetta. Right. Which is Washington. That's what that symbolizes. And it's at that level of consciousness that you should be striving towards, which is a law in man. If you're not striving towards that and you're just a historian and you have some good information and you're not doing no breathing exercises, you're not doing no meditations, you're not doing anything in which that raises the uraeus or the caduceus within this Greek terminology, Still you poor. are yeah. sadly mistaken that you are conscious. You are not <laughs> conscious. You are nothing more than a nigga historian. A lot of, a so lot of historians are eating pork and teaching about right. this. And, yeah. Right, and I don't care if you wear a yeah. fat. You are a nigga historian. What for fat? Ironically. That's all it's you are. I'm for you, but I'm not. Right, if you're not teaching... The highest principle, and we said is within the 102, the 101, and the Morris Holy Quran Circle 7, which is a law in man. And it tells you how to reach a law in man, and it tells you through the holy breath. And if you're not teaching that and yet claim to be a revealer of light, then really you are a deceiver of darkness. Yeah, mm-hmm. but because you, you're teaching about it, but are you, are you explaining what, the, what that means? And not just teaching about it. You can go over it and recite it back and forward a uh, uh, hundred miles an hour. But if you right. don't know what it's saying, I mean, let's break it down. Really, don't just give me the answer. What does that mean? How do I achieve this? Right. right. In other words, we have a lot of parents who can recite and memorize the passages, you know, the Morris literature, the more twenty commands over seven, the one oh ones, the one oh twos. That's beautiful. You can quote you can quote it. But you don't know the esoteric, metaphysical meaning of what you read. Not at all. Not at all. And you're just you know, and you're just thinking that it's just a historical information. And you've never been sat in that debt chamber of any temple structure. But yet you think that you know something. Yeah. And you take but everybody Think, and you project it egotistically before the world, and what's going to end up happening is that you're going to get stopped, <laughs> and your ego is going to get retracted. Oh yeah, big time! Everybody should be in a depth chamber because of the information that is in front of you, and everybody who possesses it. That means you should be. Everyone should be at. In a depth level, possessing that information because that's a depth. Yes. Uh, that's a depth level information. Yes, exactly. Because you're talking about one on one. You're not. Say, you didn't say one hundred. You said one on one. So the fact that you went past a hundred, you already went past three hundred and sixty degrees. Mm-hmm. And you started back at one. Mm-hmm. So let, so what does I mean? Other than what you think it means. It, 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 it can mean even deeper than that. So that's why you started back at one. Now let's get let's go further. Exactly. But once again, <laughs> uh, how many people understand that as far as going through or not going through that depth chamber information? Not 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 many. That's the problem. Not many. And that's the problem. There's no one in which that is giving these instructions openly to those members in which that needs to know this information. The bad is the worst thing about it is that they a lot of them that have been to the adept chamber and they don't uh teach the adept chamber to its members of their temples. They uh one brother referred to me uh, as I was going to one of the temples was referred to me as letting out too many secrets. Secrets? What's so secretive about being about more science? 
What's so secret about exactly. the circle seven? What's so secret right. about the one on one? Right. Or the more well, it, well, well, it, it tells you in the one on one what the circle seven is. It tells you the seven Elohims, which was, is, and forever will be. And what did they do? They formed your physical body into existence. Okay, well, if you get the yoga tradition, you will find out that those seven are the seven chakras. Yes. If you go and find and look within the book of Revelation, known as the book of Injil, you will find that those are called the seven seals. So what yeah. secret? Right. Yeah. It's, called, right. It's, called, it's called religious, comparative religious studies. That's right. There ain't no damn secret. No. Think about this. You you may not even have stumbled across the the Holy Quran or the Morris Holy Temple of Science and stumbled across the Aquarian Gospels of Jesus Christ. And you you know, without even coming across that. And it and it talks about the same information in, in there. So think about it. Why aren't you teaching about astrology? Because you're talking about the Aquarian age. Why aren't we learning about astrology? Some of them know, but they're not going to teach it. Because that's what yeah, the book is talking about. Time, right, but at the same time, they can denounce Brother Taj, Brother Raz, myself, and Hakeem Bay. They can denounce Clock of Destiny, Volume 1 and 2, written by Charles Mosley Bay, CM Bay. Mm-hmm. But yet, it's like you said in the Morris Holy Quran Circle 7. Is in which yeah. we know came from, or came, you know, what I'm saying came through the same teachings that the Aquarian Gospels is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. which actually the yeah. Rosicrucians, and we know mm-hmm. the Rosicrucians teach astrology. We know the Rosicrucian teaches astrology. You ain't got to do nothing but go and join a Rosicrucian site. That's it's all. It's a correspondence lesson. Bottom line, they teach part more the science. Right. Part of the lesson. Part of the lesson is. Well, the reason for the Rose Crucian, look at that. The Knights Templars got taught by who? More. Go to the, um, right, got taught by the Moor. Tayyudin, who was the head of the Sufi sect at that time, who was a Muslim. Who's a Moor? Who taught? Exactly. The, um, who taught the Knights Templars the information in which that they later on formed the Rose Crucians, the Rose and yeah. the Cross. Yeah, who's Pas- Pascal Beverly Randolph? Who's that? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. What they call him, Orlando. You know who that is. <laughs> right. Was he, was he no, European? Was nah. He was European. He was a Moor, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah that's right. The Mulatto. Matter of fact, what they call him, Mulatto. Fact, he tells, he, matter of fact, he tells people that his mother was a Moor, meaning he was a, that he's a Moor. Yeah. But yet... He was what? He was the highest Rosicrucian in the world. Mm-hmm. He sat at the throne. And lots of Levi got off his throne and put Beverly Pastel Randolph in his chair. He put Pastel mm-hmm. Beverly Randolph in his chair in order to head the highest order of Rosicrucian in which that he himself, Beverly Pastor Randall, was best friends with Abraham Lincoln. Yes, he was. Also a Moor. That's why he was on the brown penny or red penny. Copper mm-hmm. colored natives. They were telling you they was a Melungeon. Yeah. The Europeans had painted the picture of him in Moor yeah. Garth. Right. 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 And that is from the Library of Congress. That was from yeah, the Library of Congress. Yeah, he's sitting on the throne. What much of a secret? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, they don't got to right, hide it. They put it right in your face. Mm, oh, yeah. But there's nothing they can do about it now. The the gig is, what, what they, the, the jig is up. That's right, yeah. The cat is <laughs> back. That's right. Right. <laughs> when they going, what you going to do? Well, and that I they can't the do. shit is open. That's right. right. They studying astrology and all this stuff too. They know what time it is. Oh yeah. That's what I'm trying to do everything to stop it. But it's fruitless. 
You know, so. And then when you're talking about uh, going back to what you were saying earlier about, uh, you know, in, indigenous, and it ties you, uh, it means that we bound to the land. That goes back to the Rex, 80, Rex 84 when it says that we bound to this continent by heritage. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can, you can, yeah, so you if you look at it from the definition of indigenous, you can substitute where it says bound to this continent by heritage and put the word indigenous there. So this, so we put it indigenous there and said we're indigenous to this continent by heritage. So they're not hiding nothing. We just ain't doing enough study to put the pieces together. Right. right. And not only the word indigenous, but the fact that we are bound to this continent by heritage. The word heritage can be replaced with the word birthright. Birthright. As a matter of fact, all- you look up the word, yeah. and what's the dictionary with the word heritage, you will see in the definition the word birthright. Look up the word birthright, and you will see the word heritage. So we are bound yeah. by this continent by birthright. Because That's we right. are the original, aboriginal, indigenous, natural people of this land. Right. Uh-huh. Then when you start dealing with birthright and heritage and all these different things, you then you start getting uh, to the the state. So now you're dealing with some other stuff. Uh huh. Yes, sir. You know, so this yeah. thing is this thing is serious here. You oh, can't yeah. be tiptoeing around. You know. Because, I mean, like you say, in the circle, circle seven is right on the uh, Holy Quran. It's right in front of you. So what yeah. good is having a, the symbol in front of you and you don't know what it means? A lot of them can't tell you what it means. The four gates. Yeah. The seven, so, the center, they can't tell you what them gates mean. Yeah. But but how are you going to know your know thyself? You can, you and I can walk in there with automatic weapons. And most of, most of the temples across the country and the nation. And we can tell them from the Grand Sheik all the way down to the Muftis staff. If y'all don't tell us what, uh, what that four gates and that seven mean, we're going to kill all of you. And you and I will be the only one that walk out of the temples alive. Oh, man. They couldn't tell us to save their lives. Their lives. They couldn't tell wow. us. Wow. That is, that is not good. No, not at all. How are you going to know thyself if you don't know this? So yeah. in order to know thyself, you must un- you must know what that circle seven means. Exactly. And how, 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 how you know how this uh, applies to you in you knowing thyself. You know. Exactly. You know. He's talking. Yeah. The the, the, the Quran talking about we measure time in cycle ages. Is that, well, we, what is that talking about? I mean, this is what this is talking about, but we can quote it. Right, 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 exactly. We can quote it, but but don't come to the realization that it means astrology, or is it that much of a secret? Astrology is that much of a secret? I can't get on the Internet nowadays and look at astrology and even do an astrological chart? Come on, man, stop playing with this secret shit. Yeah. Oh. There is a secret. The goddamn secret was you, and Allah is in you. That was the secret. That you have the ability in order to activate the soul principle, and that you are the God of this goddamn planet and heaven. That was the Uh secret. And that they are just visitors. They are the immigrants. We made them in the goddamn laboratory. That's what the goddamn secret was. Hello? Yeah. Sound like freaking stuff to me. And you have those in the temples that been to the death chamber. That they probably can tell us, but they're not going to tell the rest of their their members. Well, we're dealing with information that's outside of the death chamber that you possess as a member. You possess the Holy Quran. You possess the one-on-one. This is not something that you got to hide under the table. This is something that you have probably in your hand and, and, and in your bag, on your on your shelf. This is not nothing that you're hiding under the table. This is something that everyone possesses and, and going over probably every every Sunday. No, you're right. I mean, right. every it's Sunday. Hiding, it's real simple. For those who keep hiding it, I would think that you're a goddamn psychopath. 
Exactly. Because you hide in something in which that is clearly, plainly, for those who do any research in any study to see, especially nowadays. Okay, I had all this information 20 down five years ago at the age of 19. And it's supposed okay. to be a secret. <laughs> right, and it's supposed to be a secret. Think about it. We're talking about the Korean gospel. You can go to Barnes & Noble and get that. Sure can. Thank you. Hell, you, you can go to Barnes & Noble and, and order any Rosicrucian book. The, the, the Korean gospel of Jesus the Christ, all you have to be is... Uh, uh, knowing your astronomy, astrology, and cosmologics, and you got it. Exactly. Yeah. And study and study uh, uh, yoga science. Exactly. Anytime they're talking about union or, or uh, Allah and man are one, that's the definition of the word uh, of the word yoga, which means exactly. union. Exactly. But if you can't put the pieces together, I mean, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And then you see about the higher, the higher self and the lower self, and then yeah. how there's a line of divinity between them, then you know that that's what? Yo, a yoga. Yeah. All right? And so I, it's right there in the whole final circle seven. I mean, hell, it tells you that the secrets was in India. Uh-huh. Is that, come on, let's let's go back and tell us where the secrets were. And that yeah. all the secrets... Prophet Number Twelve, he already told you that the secrets was released back in damn nineteen twenty-seven. He said India, Egypt, and Palestine. India, exactly. Egypt. So what Moata asked me was did was bring out the secrets. When Moata asked me the, the, the books you quoted from, you know, you mentioned uh, Egyptian yoga. So we got to thank Moata um, asked me for what he's done in in a few others. Who have who have uh, done this work by by uh, you know teaching the science, right? In particular, my book, First World Order. Oh yeah, so, oh, yeah. That's the information oh yeah. Got that you know, right in so, front of me so, right now. I got that right. <laughs> so, so do I, boy. Right on the side of me. Right, so, I'm right, looking so at it right now. Prophet so, Number Lee told you that the damn secret. Was damn over in 1927. So what are you jackasses still got them talking about a damn secret? <laughs> and I, I doubt they teaching them everything they're supposed to know in the middle chamber. Exactly. And Prophet Number so, he told you in the oral traditions and statements of prophecies that he came to reveal what was hidden in those secret yeah. societies. Yeah. So, so what the they average Hindu. Seem like you, your silly ass walking around here talking about there's a secret. <laughs> an average Hindu, an average Hindu knows this. Yes, he does. Uh, 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 and you talking about Palestine? You you could talk. You could be dealing with the the Sufis. You know, people. You know that SCN knowledge, which is the same thing. Yeah. Right. Or the Gnostics. Is that? Yeah, the Gnostics. Yeah. This is this is. I mean, come on. Dr. York was teaching this years ago. Is that? Yeah. Thank you. So there is no secret. Stop there with that nonsense, no. Grand Sheiks. No. Stop with that nonsense. Teach your people this information, man. Yes. Uh. Let's go to the phone line. Get area code 937. Area code 937 is on the line. Hey, what's good, fam? I'm out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, peace, boy. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Ain't not bad. I appreciate all the times you dropping, man. I was trying to get out. You were saying um, who was the one guy you were uh, talking about? You done dropped so many names, man. It's just, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing. Uh, but I was talking. The main thing I'm trying to get with is the the science of the chakras. You were saying how, you know, basically I'm trying to get. What should I look for to read? Or you, what was the name of your book? You was talking about a couple of guys there said they had it in front of them. Right, my book. Um, they said they had my book, which was the First World Order. The First you can go World online, Order. Right, the First World Order, and I show you how we spread it throughout the diaspora and set up ancient mystery schools throughout each of the so-called continents, and how the remnants of our pyramids and mounds 
which is part of what is known as your pressure points, your chakras, meridians, nodes, nadis. All of that is talking about how we was able to um, shield and protect the planet Earth from getting destroyed by meteorites. And that's how we were able to do it, by putting up these particular um, vectors of light and energy, which are mounds and pyramids. So I showed that Indeed. information. I also go into how your physical body represents a mound or a pyramid, which is a temple, and how God dwells in this temple, all right, and on um, which hence mm-hmm. is a law in man. So we go into all of that information in that book and show you how you have a nationality, that you're not Negro, black, and colored. Those are names or adjectives in which that describes an individual or person, but it is not a proper noun. So we right, need a proper right, noun. Right. What's dictionary, the word more is a proper noun, in which that definitely denotes your ethnicity, all right? Um, so we need to know that. Um, now, should we have not, a, lot of that, a lot of that I do know. Um, a lot of it I do know, but I, I'm in Dayton, Ohio, man. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the area, but it's a little country. Um, right. You know, we're not as... You know, we're not as advanced as a lot of the other cities when it comes to different movements. Right. So we don't, you know, what we do have, it's all right. the way I, I got introduced, it's all right. keep, I'm sorry. It's all right. Keep keep listening to us and, and, and um, form and start your own group up here. And we say yeah. you come out on various sites and start teaching this information. That's how we started 25 years ago. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? My first year yeah, in college, well, we got Yeah, we've got one group here called uh, Morris New Kemet. Morris New Kemet. That's right. what... Uh, Oh, cool. There's some, there's some brothers here in the city. They oh. they started more more new Kemet. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And that's how that's how I was that's how I'm able to be on this call here now to even be, you know, even conscious enough to even, you know, even understand right. half of what you're saying. Yeah. But uh, big ups to yeah. you, man. I appreciate yeah. y'all. Uh, what city? What city are y'all in? Uh, the oh, I'm in mean, public. Right, brother. Um, bro- brother L is in um St. Louis, Missouri, and brother Olabala yeah. is in New York City. That's right. That's what's up, man. That's right. And where you at? It's good too. You know, because I mean, you say you may say country, but you're a little more in tune with nature. You know, you don't have all right. that clutter and all that stuff around, so you're able to really focus and be in tune. You 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 may you may hear something. That we ain't here, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, 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 I'm in, right. I'm in, I'm in the backwoods. I'm in the boondocks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm what should I go to look for some more of that chakra train, that chakra, that chakra science? Go to our, Where should I look for go, some go more of that? Go, go, to our, go to our website, www.dralimelbay.com, D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, Dr. Aleem L. Bay. Dot com. Go to the website and check this out. We got all the information on there. Everything that I'm talking about one, one right now shot. is on the website. Everything I'm talking about Indeed. is on the website. Plus more. Yeah. Pick up the book because uh, he, he he definitely covers it in in his book and any other book he puts out. Because uh, you know I, I carry this book like it's a it's a textbook because that's what it is. I mean it's something that you can just have right in front of you. You know, yeah. uh, while I got while I got mm-hmm. y'all on the line, I got one last question regarding my status. Now, you know, I'm I'm coming. You know, I still got my birth certificate, social security card. I've I've obtained the attribute that I haven't recorded with the county. Then the way they do it at Morris New Kemet, they go down to the county here, Montgomery County, and, and record it, record yeah. the, uh, my new attribute, and then I'm supposed to get a, you know, an ID. He goes through a Pleasant Bay site to get. Another type of ID to kind of back up the uh, the little the county ID that that, that he helps uh, you know laminate or whatnot get get together. I'm just trying to figure out if there's any steps that or is there on your website? Can I get that whole process also? Yes, brother. Um, go to um, United Washington Reclamation Process. Mm-hmm. Okay, United Washington. Okay, he is some, he's with the. Uh, he talks a lot about Washington, so. Right. Okay. Well, they have the, what was it again? The United, I'm sorry. United Washington Reclamation Process. And the reason why everybody has to talk about Washington 
regardless on what more they are, because the Washington are the only moors who've been able to prove land ties. In right. the court of law, through the, United, um, through the United Nations, by way of the United States, through via the United Supreme Court. We have beaten them in the United States Supreme Court back in 18, what, 1848 and 1850, in which that shows that the land now called Louisiana Purchase never was purchased, and the United States does not own more than, more than 13 states, all the way up into Canada. Right, 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 right. Something about the Virginia companies and, and whatnot. Now, what does that got to do with? What about the Magna Carta? Let's jump on that. Does that have any? Uh, what's the what's the, the relevance of the, the? The Magna Carta was a European document in which that Europeans came together, in which that they wanted to put forth and establish their own quote unquote society. That information was brought up and it was part of. The earliest part of what now become known as the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, in which that, um, in which that was established for them by us, we wrote those documents. Right, right. Anyone would tell you that you go and do your research that Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin sat amongst the Iroquois Confederation. They referred to as the Indians, who actually was more. They misnomer us mm-hmm. being Indians. But you can go and find out that they sat amongst us and they learned of constitutional law. They learned of structuring of government from us. Exactly. <laughs> and this is why they have to put the – check this out. A, a European, an Albion, he's in his 70s, early 70s, and he asked me, he said, what is that Muslim symbol talking about the, the pyramid in the eye? Now, remember now, everybody else call it a Illuminati symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Illuminati. God damn, the Illuminati. Jay-Z, that motherfucking Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> everybody <laughs> Illuminati, right? Now, this European walks up to me, and he's a Shriner, Masonic Shriner. Now, he said, what is that Muslim symbol doing on the back of our dollar bill? And so I'm laughing because I'm like, oh, okay, he's testing me. Oh, well, let me break that shit out for you. Oh, um... United States was first recognized by Morocco mm-hmm. by way of what is known as the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of the United States and Morocco. He looked at me and he gave a little smirk. So he said a Muslim symbol. What is that Muslim symbol? What is that pyramid? That Muslim symbol going on the back of our dollar bill. Now, you know we put that back on the dollar bill. That was Franklin Leonardo Roosevelt back in 1933. Once he took the gold off the, um, off the, um, off the standard, in which that was back in the money, and which that produced the I know, so part of, partly the I know, until 1973, in which Nixon took it off the silver standard, he asked. What was that Muslim symbol going on the back of the dollar bill? He knew what time it was. How much? He knew what time it is. Think about it. He right. could have said Egyptian symbol. He said Muslim symbol. He said Muslim symbol. Is that exactly? Yep. And he could have said Egyptian symbol. But we know that yeah. Egypt is what ninety three percent what Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, exactly. So, so these are the things in which that they're doing in order to tell on themselves. You just sit back and let it happen. You just sit back and let it happen. You got it right, though. Prophet Noble said they have to tell the truth. And that's what's going on. So we appreciate you, brother, for coming on and adding to the um, information. Thank you. Appreciate and for anyone who wants to call in, we got 20 more minutes. Please call in at 626 414 3535. That's 626 414 3535. Call in, check us out. 
All right, we got every code 513. Every code 513 on the line. How you doing, Peace. Dr. Eileen Bay? Peace, bro. How you doing? Peace, God. Yeah, I'm doing all right. My name is Ladar Mitchell. I'm calling from Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. Ohio all right, in the house right. tonight. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been wanting to talk to you for a minute. Uh, how, how are y'all brothers doing? Uh <clears throat> Right. Dr. Uh, Dr. L. Uh, Aleem L. Bay, I um I ordered some of that uh, peroxide from you. Right. And it was uh it's fantastic. I'm gonna be ordering some more yes, when this uh when when the rest uh when I used the rest up, I gave my mama a bottle and uh I'm about through with mine, but I got about like another two weeks on it and I'm through. I, I'll be making another order. All right, give us a positive review and we can add it to the website. That sounds good. Okay, okay. I also want to let you know, I, uh, every time I go to your website, I click on your Google ad because, you know, I'm very knowledgeable with that. You know, I'm real, you know I, I have a whole bunch of, you know, I had a bunch of websites, you know, making money off of Google ads. And uh, so since I don't really too much donate, when y'all first put that in my head to click on, go to the website to click, I was like, yeah, this is a, why did I think of that? Why did I think of that? Like, you know what I mean? So, like, I make sure I go up there and click on y'all ass, man. Like, every 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 other day or so. Yeah, every other day or so. But uh, I got a question. Um, I got a question. Um, me and my sister was talking about, uh, like, the Bible and stuff, and uh, she had mentioned in the hotel. And I remember hearing a little stuff about about in hotel, and she was yeah, yeah she was she was saying a little stuff about like how he uh well I, well, I, I want to get a little question first like did I hear that in hotel was like like he is like the closest to like the the to Christ or Jesus that walked this earth right exactly um if you get. Um, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World by Jeremiah Massey, as well as also his Jeremiah Massey Lectures. Within both of those books, he specifically states, matter of fact, also within historical um, Jesus and mythical Christ, he says within both of all three of those books that Imhotep was the pre Christ and is the story mm. in which that Prometheus, um, Dionysus, Jesus, you know, all of these stories, Hercules, all of these stories come from Imhotep. Samson in the Bible comes from Imhotep. He was the healer. This is where the medical symbol that we have now, which dates back over 3,000 years old, comes from, from the third dynasty by Imhotep, who was the prime advisor. And matter of fact, this is where the story of Joseph comes from in the Bible. It's actually written about him. Mm. So Joseph is a mythical character is a fictional allegorical character, but is written about an actual living person by the name of Imhotep, who lived during the Third Dynasty and was a prime minister or prime advisor, which was the equal status at that time to now what we have as the Pope during um, Egypt or Kemet or Tamre during that time period, during the Third right. Dynasty. Uh, and he was a master builder. He was an architect. He was a drafter. He's the one who built the Zagarot, which is the seven-step pyramid. And mm. he also is the one in which that performed over um, um, over 200 different surgeries in which that put together what was called um, the Eber Papyrus. A lot of his information is in the Eber or Eber Papyrus in which that talks about the surgeries, the brain surgeries, the um, different other things, eye surgeries in which that the Egyptians was doing over 3,000 years ago. Not just, not just them um, today. Mm-hmm. There's something new under the sun. Imhotep was no. already doing that shit over 3,000 years ago. And you can get another <laughs> book called The Now Valley Contribution to Civilization by Anthony T. Broder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And see, that's mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. This shit is over. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Another question. Uh, is that what y'all? I was what y'all was saying earlier about the Muslims and stuff. I always kind of like wonder, like, like why is all these entertainers and rappers like once they in the industry, and then they've been in it and they done learned the game and you know then then they gather some experience and they know what's going on and then then they a lot of them been turned into Muslim. And I used to be like, what? 
That's because the word Muslim or Muslim stems from the ancient Egyptian comedic Tamaranian word, hieroglyphics, metronetter, that means mesrem. Mesrem. M E S R E M. Mesrem. When you bring it together, is the word Mesrem, is the word Muslim or Muslim. But the word Mesrem means a child of the light. Or children of Ra. Wow. That's what Mr. Ami. So all of us are children of Ra if you have melanin. Matter of fact, we are called the children of the sun. For those who have melanin, we are the Kushites, which means children of the sun. We are the um, 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 Ethiopians, the burnt ones, which is the Egyptian, um, which is the um, Greek, Phoenician interpretation of the word Ethiopian. All right? So we are the children of the sun. We are the ones who have been burnt or kissed by the sun, by rock, yeah. and kissed by rock. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So okay. we are Muslims or Muslims or Muslims in that sense. But we're not in the Arabian sense. You would not catch me wearing any more ga- damn dresses. <laughs> okay? No. Called mm-hmm. Telebias, all right? Right. In other words, you do not have to follow the customs and the traditions of people who come from out of Arabia, who come from out of desert. We're not in a desert. We're in the damn urban cities. Right. Exactly. Right. We're in the country. You don't have, you ain't riding on no goddamn camels. You're not even riding on horses and buggies any longer. You're right. jumping on trains and planes and damn buses and taxi cabs. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so, so, so that's the nonsense we have adopted, and then you get Muslims who are so they are more Arab than Arabs. Yeah, exactly. the nigga, the nigga, the nigga dialect changes. Yeah. The nigga like, sounded like an Arab all of a sudden. Possibly <laughs> living outside of themselves. I see in Lake Rock, Mr. Nate, the better cock to who, brother? Yeah, look at you and Tony last week. <laughs> yeah, walking around with a red beard. <laughs> Why is your beard red, brother? You got a red beard. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Nigga, nigga, more Arabs than Arabs. And the Arabs yeah. around here, damn, damn, selling pork and shit in the damn stores. They selling exactly. wine yeah. and shit. They selling drugs. Like they damn, damn selling drugs and shit. Damn drug um, paraphernalia is up in their damn stores. They got crack pipes up in them shit. <laughs> and these niggas are more Arabs than this. And these niggas are more Arabs than the Arabs. They're right. As I say, constantly live outside of themselves. Right. Yeah. Instead of being themselves. So the point is that we don't have to um, arrive anything in which that we're doing. Continue being African, which is i.e. North African, which is Northwest African. Hence the reason why Cayenne West named his daughter Northwest as North in Northwest West. of Mexico. Wow. As in Northwest yeah. of Mexico. All right. So he's studying this information, too, because he tells you that he first got into rapping actually by hanging out with the brother's, um, oh, man, what's the brother's name? Um, my man. Uh, oh, Jay Electronica. Nah, not Jay Electronica, because you know he, because you know that um he's a more too, and so is most death. But we got yeah, the two um, brothers. Um, we got the two brothers. Um, who do the um music? Oh man, what's the name? Um, M One, my man M One. A Dead Prez. Yeah, Dead Prez. Exactly. He was hanging out with Dead Prez, and wow. that's how he learned how to get his flow together. And so Dead Prez, as you know, is conscious. So this is why Kanye mm-hmm. West's first album was so conscious. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But once again, you know, right, right, right. But now, you know, um, you know, nigga went from Jesus Walks, you know what I'm saying, to now that he's um, um, Yeezy, you know what I'm saying, or Yeezus. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? You know who Yeezus yeah, yeah. is, right? Yeah, that's Jesus. Right. He's telling you that he's Jesus. He's Kanye West. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The king of, 
the king of the West. The word Kayan or Kai means king. The word West symbolic to the king of the West, which means um, the Lord um, Hedu Marquis, which is the Sphinx, in which, that is, in which that is the Lord of the horizon of East and West. Kayan West is the Lord of the West, the king of the West. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what that's symbolic to. Yeah, he you know changed the uh, Jesus piece to uh, Haru piece after after okay. that. Yeah, and look at Jay Z. He, he Jay Z back to his roots. He's five percent again. You know what I'm saying? Talking about his God body, and y'all didn't realize that he had so much skill in his body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And hmm. and he tell you specifically he said, "Yo, I'm not Illuminati, but I'm God body." Right, mm-hmm. he's chilling, chilling in Mor- uh, Morocco with my brother. Exactly, and now he's wearing his five percent um, emblem again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know, and saying that he's yeah. chilling in Morocco in Mar- in Marrakush. Marrakush. He didn't say Morocco. He said Marrakush, right. meaning he had to know he something to even. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, Which is the problem? Yeah. yeah. And, and now that they got their millions, now they can come out and say some shit. You heard um 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 my man Evan. um little Wayne. He, he was just saying um he just saying um I don't talk to pigs. Assalamualaikum. That's good. them guys know Rick Ross. All, all them, them niggas, know. All the all the niggas studying Islam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course, yeah. that Big is time. Big time. Big time. You know what I'm saying? That is what leads us back to ancient Egypt, is Islam. We wouldn't be into this ancient Egyptian information, understanding the Egyptian adept information in which that Prophet Nobu Jali brought, in which that this information, um, as we read, what was this information hitting that brother Olabala? Uh, in India. India. Egypt and Egypt Palestine. And Palestine. Thank you. So we wouldn't be having this information if it wasn't for the revealing of it coming from out of those particular countries and spreading throughout the world and via, i.e., the Internet. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I had to read hundreds and thousands and thousands of books and magazines and articles 25 years ago. There was no damn... YouTube. There was no damn <laughs> live talk radio. There was no damn, you know what I'm saying, internet. Mm, I had right. to go to the library and steal books. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rip pages out. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I had to rip uh, pages out. Exactly. <laughs> I had to do all this stuff. I still got my information shit now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just get information. That's what I'm I got to be about it, you know what I'm saying? I thirst for knowledge because it was about my soul. I'm in, I'm in church. These motherfuckers for 20 years tell me, oh, your soul needs to be saved, but then can't tell me what the soul is. Don't tell me that the soul is God and man or that the soul is Allah and man. They had me thinking that the soul was something abstract and God right. was separate from the soul. And I had to go right. and search for the God. I had to go and search for God. God is up there in the sky some damn weird. In the storm. In the Neptune. In the sun. He wherever he at, he, he ain't nowhere near me. So I had to get on my knees and pray to him and look up like white Jesus on the damn photo, on the game painting. Mm-hmm. And have a look up with the little sad face. Lord, can you hear me? <laughs> I hope you can hear me, Lord. Please pray for me. That's my family. <laughs> I'm the sinner saved by grace. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like Kendrick the Wall. You know, I'm a Santa. I'm probably going to Santa again. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Lord, forgive yeah. me. <laughs> oh, Let me get that boy. shit in right now. Right, let me get that shit in right now. Lord forgive me, because I'm probably going to do it again. <laughs> Man, what? That is wild. Uh, yeah. 
Please don't, don't kill my vibe. Please don't kill my vibe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this so this is the type of shit, y'all. <laughs> 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 Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So I'm in church and I'm trying to find my soul and these mugs can't even tell me what the soul is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm reading first Corinthians, the third chapter, the sixteenth verse. Do you not know that the temple of God is that that ye are the temple of God? What the fuck are you talking about temple of God? Then I read further down in the second Corinthians. Do you not know that your body since you didn't know what the temple was, let me explain to you what the temple is. Your body is the temple of God, and do you not know that God dwells in thee? God damn. Mm-hmm. Hold up now. Hold, hold, hold up. Hold up. Shit. The program is just broke. <laughs> the program is just broke. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here I am on my yeah. knees with my hands clapped together, talking about, oh, Lord, help me. Please don't let me sin again. Lord, forgive me. I'm probably going to do it again. <laughs> please don't kill my vibe. Please, please, oh, please, man. Please, please don't kill my vibe. Please don't kill my vibe. <laughs> and, oh. and think about this John ten thirty four. And exactly. Jesus said, Isn't it written in your law that ye are all God? Yeah, you know. Psalm eighty two six. Verse verse six. Children exactly. of the Most High God, preacher, please explain. Exactly. Oh no, that's God with a little G. It's no little G in <laughs> exactly. the Hebrew. Stop playing games. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's, that's Elohim. God with a little G. Exactly. And Elohim, which is the I M, is part of the E L O H, which is Allah. Mm-hmm. Elah, Allah, which. Is, but you don't even want to recognize that. But yet no. you say hallelujah, which is Allah you Akbar. <laughs> English, trans, translated English. Yeah. That's all Allah who Allah, hallelujah is Allah you Akbar. Yeah. Translated Honestly, praise English. God. Right. Praise God. No. This, this, this is the nonsense. This, this is the nonsense. All right. So we can't raise your head up out of here. We appreciate y'all for coming on, um, checking us out. And um, Brother Ola Bali gave you closing remarks. Brother L. Uh, yes, brother. Uh, uh, we, did, we did a lot of good tonight. So we're going to keep on do, doing the same thing uh, maybe Wednesday and Friday. All right. Brother Ola Bala. I don't know. Brother Olabala. Where'd he go? Oh, I don't Where'd know. He go? So, okay, hold on. I don't know. Let's see. Brother Olabala, that's you? Yeah, you hear me? Okay, yeah. Now we got you. Come on. Yeah, you got me? Yeah, they got me again, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on, brother. Come on with it. Oh, stop picking on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we was cooking. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. 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 That's that melanin again. Yes. No doubt. Yeah. All right. Well, we getting ready to head out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. 
earthly state of human concerns and existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound to the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound to the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.